What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you really quickly to everybody who has subbed and watched my videos the last couple of weeks. I'm getting back into YouTube and I'm really thankful for all the support and I'm a pretty busy person. I have a full-time job as a service advisor at a dealership. I race professionally once a month and of course on the weekends to pass the time in between races, I'm building project cars. So thank you for following along and this week I'm going to be doing a build breakdown of my EK hatchback. about it, what it looked like when I got it, what all I've done to it. I really regret not doing a lot of the progress of the build on YouTube. I did a lot of the build on Instagram Reels, which is out there. I didn't have a lot of time for editing then, so I thought the 30 second to 45 second Reels really was best for me for time-wise. So if you want to go to at Team Sally Racing, you could find a lot of the actual build progress of this car on there and well we're gonna go over it today and I hope you enjoy so I bought this car about two years ago I saw it on up or up and there's only about three things that really jumped out to me about this car but I knew I had to have it so it had a straight body the engine bay was kind of shaped and tucked, and it was shampooing. It didn't come with any bumpers. It didn't come with a cluster. It had a battery rolling around in the back. It didn't even run. It was a really kind of a roach. It had an LSB tech that we don't even know who built it. It leaked from every orifice, and but I really had to have the car. The cherry of this build has to be the B18C5. I had reached out to one of my homies and see if he knew anybody who was selling one and he happened to have this swap in his garage. Engine, trans, ECU, it's pretty much a plug and play setup besides the harness and I went over to his house and I picked it up. A lot of you asked why I went with a B series and not a K. Um, the biggest thing was this came from a reputable friend and I knew it was going to be good. Um, it was at a great price and I couldn't say no. Um, I am doing a K swap at my house in my Integra over here. But this was my first big like Honda swap and I was kind of intimidated and I didn't want to go too crazy. B-Series is actually really fun. It's like Legos. It's awesome. So if you have an EK and you're thinking about doing a swap, taking out your D-Series and you're not looking for anything too hard, B-Series is the way to go hands down. Now we can't talk about a B18C5 and not talk about exhaust noises. Exhaust it looks so good under here. Look at that. Borla exhaust with a custom turn down tip by GSK Fabrication. This car has a pretty much a full exhaust with V bands and a custom turn down. We've got the custom Ron Davis radiator. This thing is fantastic. Hands down, if you call up to Ron Davis and ask them for the radiator Sally has, they will make you exactly this. If it's perfect for any EK or EG body, would recommend. We've got the Spoon Sport hoses. We've got the AEM intake. We've got the radium fuel rail and fuel pressure regulator. All right, so let's get into other things I've done. I have the JRZ RS Pro suspension. These are remote reservoirs. A lot of people have asked me if that's like an oiling system for my engine or what are these blue canisters? And those are the remote reservoirs. Um, best suspension you can find, honestly. It's a rather expensive, but it's worth the money. That's the way I look at it because if you're gonna buy the cheap stuff, it's gonna fall apart, so. Would definitely, if you're looking for some nice suspension that's gonna last, 
JRZ is the way to go. A lot of people asked why I didn't put the reservoirs into the actual wheel well. And that's because if I come off track and I want to adjust my suspension, I would have to take my, jack the car up and take the wheel off. This way, all I have to do is pop the hood and boom, I can adjust the suspension. I came up with that idea because I have seen real race cars, GT4, GT3 cars actually have their uh, adjustments for their suspension in the reservoirs and the engine bay. And if they can run them in the engine bay, this EK can run them in the engine bay. So kind of cool to grab some ideas from real race cars and motorsport. Another thing I did was I deleted the brake booster. Um, we went with the honed kit. This kit, a lot of people ask, that's really gonna affect your braking. And honestly, it really doesn't. It does feel different. You do have to get used to it. But the big thing is it just gets rid of the extra slop in the pedal. So all you do is feel brake feel, which is actually really nice. I don't recommend daily driving with this, but I would recommend if you're going out for a cruise, but definitely if you're gonna do some track driving, this is the way to go. And plus it makes your engine bay look so clean. I actually replaced my brake master and my clutch master with an S2000 masters. Um, they are actually from Dorman Products. You can order these anywhere at any parts authority store. They have them and can get them in stock for you. So would recommend for an EK build. Like I said, this car came with no front bumper and the headlights were terrible. So I had to source a pretty much a whole front end for this car. I got the headlights from Yahoo Japan and when they showed up, they were perfect and I was absolutely stunned. I got this bumper from Zach Japan and it is a J-Blood bumper. If you know anything about J-Blood, their fit and finish is 100% perfect. You can just put it on, there's no cutting, there's no fitting, it fits fantastic right out of the box. My favorite thing about the J-Blood bumper is that it's all one piece. You don't have to have any extra grill. It all fits together and it's all. Probably one of the longest things I waited for for this car was the hood. This is a Jay's Racing hood. I was not baller enough to get the carbon fiber version, so I went with the FRP. I still think it looks really great. I do plan on painting it body color, so champ white at some point, but lately I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to do that. One of the things that I did put on were these arrow catch hood pins. Um, I will admit it was a little intimidating when I first saw them, but once I read the instructions and I followed it, it was actually pretty simple and it was a lot of fun. So, and I think they look really good. I did go with the locking version because I am deathly afraid of something happening to this car. So I would recommend getting the locking version if you get some, but honestly, they're pretty simple. And yes, that brings us to the back of the car. And I have clear tails. I get a lot of trash for this, but I don't care because I love it. Some guy tagged me on a Facebook ad since some guy was selling them. And I am so thankful to that guy for doing that because I got to pick up the taillights that I've been looking so long for. And I'm so thankful to that guy. So thanks, dude. And yes, I cut holes in my spare tire area so I could put my JRZ reservoirs inside of the car so it'd be easily accessible if I wanted to change the suspension settings. And I did relocate my battery to the back of the car as well. Oh, and yes, I do have a four point bolt in cage, which is kind of cool. Let's talk about big brake kits. It's a C43 caliper with an S2000 bracket with a Mini Cooper rotor. If you add those things together, you get this kit. 
Y'all are gonna ask, what does that fit like in the wheel? Well, I have a 15 by eight plus 35 gram lights, 57 trans in. I absolutely love this wheel. Probably one of my favorites. I mean, I do have them on my 8th gen too with a stop tech brake kit, so kind of a fan. All right, the interior. All right, so this car had a lot of missing plastics. Literally half of them were gone. I have sourced a lot of these pieces from either Yahoo Japan, from Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, whatever, meeting people, picking up little pieces here and there to try to make this interior back together. From pretty much the B pillar forward. I don't care about the B pillar back, it can stay empty, but from the B pillar forward, I kind of want a street car. These are real EK9 door panels. I found somebody here in the States that was selling them. I, it's been a while since I've gotten these, but I absolutely do love them because they do look really nice. Now my seats are two Brides at a Threes, kind of to mimic the EK9 look. I'm definitely not baller enough to buy the real EK9 seats or pay for the shipping for them to come to America. So these are just gonna have to do. And they look really good because they have the shiny back and I really like them. Now I do have my Nardi wheel. I have a Works Bell hub. Um, I have a CRV manual cluster and then the C's brushed bezel for the cluster. And I also did get the radio delete. And just so you know, this is still available at Honda dealerships. So if you want one, you can go to a Honda dealership and you can still order that. Just so you know. And now into the passenger side floorboard. You can see right there is my rye wire harness to the firewall for my quick disconnect. And you can also see my Honda data box. There's a really cool checkered sports little bracket there with rubber bushings. So none of the vibrations break anything loose inside of that Honda data box. Honestly, it's pretty clean. Once I put my glove box in, it'll look a lot better, but I'm looking for a latch in this trim piece. Once I get that in there, it's gonna look pretty clean and it's gonna look like a pretty sweet street car. That's pretty much it for the EK9 build breakdown. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I missed and if you have any questions you can leave me a comment below and I'll try to get to those. But for now we're going to be working on the Integra. I've got everything out of the engine bay and we're going to start sanding, priming, and painting.